Hey there, this is Daniel West for Dell and Artie here today to introduce to you the May 2021 My Monthly Hero Card Kit. And we're going to do some no line Copic coloring today using the main image from the kit. This month's kit includes a 6x8 clear stamp set with coordinating frame cuts, intensified black ink cube, a contour ink cube, which we will be using, turquoise sparkle embossing powder, some rose quartz and quartz pearlescent cardstock, and some winter frost cardstock. I'm going to use some Express It card here for Copic coloring and pop it in my misty and ink up my stamp this is the main image from the kit with some contour ink contour ink is a very very light gray ink that is perfect for copic coloring or any kind of watercolor basically any kind of coloring medium I'm going to ink it up once and stamp it and let you see what it looks like. You're not going to be able to see the image very well here. It's very faint and that's on purpose. It's designed this way. But you can ink it up as many times as you like and, and give the impression uh, another layer of ink until you're happy that you can see it. I'm going to ink it up at least three times. You can see it a little better now. And the point of this ink is that it disappears in your coloring. When you're finished coloring, you're not supposed to be able to see the ink anymore. And if you gave this uh, ink maybe five impressions, you'd still be able to see it after the, the coloring was finished. But the way it is, if you do it one time, two times, three times, you're still not going to be able to see the color. But you're going to be able to see the image as you color. So to begin our coloring process, I've chosen a color palette that I think best reflects a coral undersea kind of setup. And so I've determined what my colors are by going to a website called coolers.co, C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O and uploaded a picture of a coral reef and then chose the colors out of there and they gave me the Copic color equivalents. So that's how I picked my color palette. And I'm working with blue greens, then reds, then yellow reds, and that's it basically. I'm also using earth tones in the reds so it kind of uh, adds a bit of earthiness to my red coral at the top. And because the lines are so faint, I pre-colored, I pre-stamped in black, and then colored my image using the black and white version of the stamp, or stamped image, just to kind of guide me along, because it, you can sometimes lose the detail with the contouring, a light stamping, and you need something maybe to guide you along. You don't have to pre-color it, but that's what I did. And I first laid down a light wash of the blue-green. I'm not giving the numbers on purpose. You can see them in the screen there. Those aren't as important as the darkness of the color, I guess you could say. The last number is what's most important, I think, when you're trying to to create depth. So I'm doing, I did a first wash with the light color and then added some of my darkest color along the outer edges, the darkest edges of my coral here. And then I'm blending it out with a medium shade. And there you see, I think I've, I've got the coral just the way I want it. At the end, I'll come back and add a few more details that I think are missing. Now on the top coral piece, I did not do it the same order. I used the darkest color first, did the outline, because this is a more intricate piece of coral. I wanted to have the outline first kind of 
and I'm not outlining the whole thing, just adding where I, if I'm going to color this with black and white, uh, a black and white image, I would color it this way as well. But I'm just adding my darkest shadow first and then another layer. And here you can see I wanted, <laughs> I really could not see what I was doing with the amount of ink I had laid down, so I added another bit of contour ink there and I could see it much better. You may not be able to see the difference on the video because the video doesn't capture the details that my plain old eyeballs can capture. But uh, here I'm adding the lightest layer and now I'm coming back with my mid-tone and blending it, blending it out. You'll see on the left-hand side of my picture, I have colored the entire thing with the mid-tone and not left any of the lighter shade there showing and I did that on the blue green one as well and that's because I want it to appear as though there's light hitting the left hand side of the corals but not the right hand side and so you'll see complete shading on one side and then you'll see some of the highlights on the left hand side now I'm doing the scallop shell here and you can see that I started with my lightest shade first just flicking the lines in there and now I'm adding in the details. I'm adding back the details with my darkest color, some specks in there that you can see with a contour ink but not, uh, not super clear. So now I'm coming up to the little shelf life i'm not sure what that is it, it's some kind of it's not it looks like fungus on a tree but i know that it's an actual sea creature growing on the side of the coral i'm doing that with yellow reds and now there's there are these little very detailed pieces of sea life i'm not um i'm not familiar with all the names of these creatures but this one is super detailed, so I just did some flicks in there and basic coloring. And now I'm going to surprise you. I'm bringing in some underpainting with this green color, and that's going to knock back some of the red that I'm going to add in here. And it will add some depth to this sea anemone. I think this is an anemone. And so all of the little frongs coming out of this little creature, you'll notice that that green is being covered up by the red that I already put down. And it really just desaturates the color and uh, adds shadow in there. So I'm desaturating by doing that. And then I'm adding in the darkest red here, leaving some strips of white here and there just to make it look like the light is hitting our little anemone here. I wanted to go back in and add a little bit more of that green and the red really does take a take the green out of there completely. You can't even see it. It only desaturates the red. Now the base of this is really difficult. Even when I stamped it in black it was hard to figure out what it was. <laughs> So uh, I just made it kind of like the bottom shelf of a um, coral reef and added a bit of dimension underneath there. Now for these little tiny anemones, I've decided to go with yellow reds and ignore the actual drawing and just kind of use it as a guide instead and uh, do some flicking in there and add my own little details with different saturations of these Copic markers. I think it turned out just fine. And I'll finish up with a blue-green starfish. I don't know if there are actually blue-green starfish, but there are now. <laughs> it works well with my palette, and I think it came out pretty good. Pretty good. Now, if you are used to having the black and white image to color against, that's fine. It's perfectly fine. I just think that the no line coloring is a little more sophisticated and less cartoon like and uh, really is a, a beautiful way to create a card. 
And I'm going to create a card base here out of some Dove White cardstock using my score buddy, a Teflon bone folder, and half a sheet of cardstock. I'm going to pop up my colored panel with some foam tape. And then I'm going to create a sentiment strip using a sentiment from the main stamp set from the kit. There are lots of other images in this kit like fish and other things, lots of sentiments. I wanted to focus on this larger image though because it really is an eye catcher. And our sentiment says salt water heals everything. I live in the ocean state and make my way to the ocean several times a year and I can just say that that is so true. Spending some time watching the waves crash against the rocks or sitting out on the beach. It really is relaxing and, and refreshing. I'm just going to pop this little sentiment strip up on the front of my card, the bottom right corner, equidistant from the edge, just like my colored panel is equidistant from the card base. And then I'm going to add some embellishments. These are seashell embellishments with sequins. This mix comes from Hero Arts. First I drop down my Hero Arts precision glue where I want my sequins. And then I grab some of the sequins in a mix of colors, popping them up there. But I also wanted to add some clear enamel dots. I think they work really well with sequin mix because they're not too eye-catching. They just really add a bit of flair to the project. I'm really happy you were able to join me today for the introduction of the May 2021 My Monthly Hero Card Kit. If you're interested in picking this kit up, I think it's going to sell out really fast. So you might want to hop right on there. There are links in the description box below, and you can pick up this kit right away. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that button and hit the bell as well so you get notifications every time I upload a new video or I go live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time.